So, dudes, it's your bass boy Bryce in the house. I'm just a bipedal pedal peddler here to pedal you some pedals to purchase. Today, we're going to be looking at how to make synthesizer sounds with a bunch of pedals you might already have laying around and a bass guitar. You can use a regular guitar for this too, but we like that extra boom boom bass here at Perfect Circuit. So the first question you might ask is, why would you ever want to do this? You know, there could be a bunch of reasons. You know, maybe you're in a band that doesn't have a keyboard player and you need to fill out some cool synth sounds that you couldn't get with a regular bass setup. Maybe you're trying to get the most out of your gear without buying a synth. Maybe you don't know how to play keys. Or maybe you just want some interesting textures you couldn't otherwise get with a normal synthesizer. So today we're gonna to look at five ways to make synth sounds with your guitar. So the first method we're gonna look at today is the most classic approach to making synth sounds with guitar pedals. Uh, we're gonna use a standard octave pedal, a fuzz pedal to add some harmonics, and then an envelope filter to give us a little quack. This method's been used for decades by tons of artists, most notably Bootsy Collins and Parliament Funkadelic. So we're gonna start with our clean bass tone. Next, we're gonna add in the octave pedal I mentioned. For this, we're gonna use the Mutron Octivider, which is one of the oldest octave pedals there is, so it's really fitting for this kind of classic sound. And it's gonna help us blend some sub bass into our regular signal. Next, we're gonna add the Maleco B Ass Master. Everyone at Perfect Circuit loves ass. Awesome synth sounds. <laughs> Using a gated fuzz is really cool because the gate kind of closes off our note attack, which gives us a little bit synthier sound to our playing. <laughs> Lastly, we're gonna go into our envelope filter. Today we're using the Source Audio Spectrum, which is one of my favorite envelope filters due to its sheer flexibility and just really good sound. Uh, today we're using it on a setting that's kind of emulating the classic Mutron envelope filter from the 70s that you might've heard used by Bootsy Collins or the Grateful Dead or all kinds of people. And that's gonna get us sounding like this. Now let's check it out in context with a little jam. So the second approach we're going to look at today is kind of emulating a sub bass patch in electronic music. You know, the approach we're using today was inspired by John Davis, who plays with the band Nerve with Jojo Mayer doing live drum and bass, not Jonathan Davis from Korn, as well as artists like Square Pusher and Past Perfect Circuit video guest and friend Yannick Wizdala, whose video you can check out on our channel. This time we're also going to be using a compressor up front to make sure that we get some better tracking from our octave pedal so it doesn't kind of fart out. Taking a plane break. So for this sound, we're gonna start with the Empress bass compressor. This is gonna help us control our dynamics and make our octave pedal track a lot better. This time with the Octavider, we're gonna turn the mix 100% wet so we're only getting that juicy, synthy, sub bass kind of square wave synth tone and not mixing in our regular bass tone. Just gonna sound like this. We're following that up with a bit crusher to add some harmonics uh, and kind of emulate more of a lo-fi sound. For that, we're using the Red Panda bitmap today, which is going to get us somewhere like this. So let's hear this one in context, too. For method number three, the magic number, we're gonna expand on our sub bass method we just looked at, but we're also gonna add in a filter and modulate the cutoff frequency with an expression pedal. I'm also gonna use the upright bass here to kind of help us get some cleaner slides to simulate a pitch envelope on a synth. But you can do this with any instrument.
So the fourth method we're going to look at that you might have been wondering this whole time about is synth pedals designed to emulate synthesizers. There are tons of options here, and we couldn't possibly cover them all, but we're going to look at a few of my favorites. All right, so the first synth pedal we're going to look at is an absolute classic. It's the Electro Harmonics Bass Micro Synth. This has been used by tons of artists over the years, like the Gap Band and Juan Alderete from the Mars Volta. The bass microsynth most resembles the first classic approach we showed, but it gives us a little bit more control over our envelope shapes and is just a little bit synthier. The microsynth might be smaller than your average synthesizer, but it's got a big enough sound to satisfy the entire audience. Next up is my all-time favorite synth pedal, the Digitech Bass Synth Wah. These are discontinued, but they're still relatively affordable, and they've been used by artists like Daft Punk. If it's good enough for Daft Punk, it's good enough for your bass boy, Broyce. Lastly, we're checking out another source audio pedal, the C4 synth pedal. This is definitely the most modern kind of synth pedal of the bunch, and it's capable of like infinite sounds. It has a crazy editor that Aaron's gonna put on camera right now and screen record. And it's used by all kinds of experimental players like Nick Reinhardt in our recent video with him and uh, bass player Nathan Navarro. All right, so for method number five, we're gonna look at blending our signals together to make a fatter sound. You might have noticed so far in the video that some of these sounds, especially the synth pedals, are kind of a little thin by modern standards. So blending in our octave fuzz tone we looked at earlier with the synth pedal is gonna give us a way bigger sound that's gonna fill the mix a lot more. You might have heard this technique in the past from artists like Chris Wolstenholme from the band Muse who famously kind of blends a classic synth pedal, the Akai Deep Impact, with a distorted bass tone to get a way bigger sound. Using a signal blender pedal like the Electro Harmonics Tri-Parallel Signal Blender, the Boss LS2 Line Selector, or the Old Blood Noise Endeavor Signal Blender we're using today is a really cool way to get the most out of the gear you already have and really expand your sonic palette by combining things. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with your bass boy Bryce today. I'll see you on the flippity floppity dog. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share all your Twin Peaks series in the comments, and hit that bell. Bye!